Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are having a very fun conversation about sex workers, which has been inspired by a conversation that I have been repeatedly been exposed to and part of over the last few months uh, with some people that I have been hanging around with. So this is um, thanks to them. And we will be a few, doing a few things today, defining what is sex work, because I think a lot of times there's a misunderstanding or mis, we'll just go with misunderstanding that sex work is one and only one thing, which is prostitution. And that's not true. <clears throat> what? I know I already blew your mind. So <laughs> we're going to talk about the umbrella of sex work. And we're going to talk about legally what constitutes sex work. Um, in Canada anyway, because that's where I live and that's what I can speak to. And we're going to look at the ways that if you have been ever considering being a sex worker uh, or doing sex work of any kind, that the ways you can do it and have it be totally legal. So why? Because I love loopholes. All right. <laughs> so um, you can take that however you want. And for those of you who are brand new, this is the Pleasure Zone, where we discuss all things body, sex, intimacy, pleasure. We explore it all. We explore it all from the very basics, the fundamentals of, of biology to the very basic fundamentals of the physiology, all the way to pretty much the, you know, the, the, the psychology, the sociology, the even anthropology on this show at times. We've actually discussed um some of the ancient sex uh, sex things that have been out there, ancient sexual texts and ancient things that have been found, like for still does that have been found, that sort of thing. So on this episode, I would love it if you guys have questions. For one, feel free to write to me and, and ask any questions you have regarding this topic, especially if it's something you're interested in, not sure how to get involved. Maybe you have you're interested in doing it, but you also are judging yourself a lot, which can create a bit of an issue. I think anytime you're judging yourself a lot in any business, it creates a bit of an issue, especially for moving forward. It puts a little bit of a damper into the energy of it. So let's start with the definition of sex work. Um, the definition of sex work, according to me, <laughs> so... The, de the definition of sex work legally is, is a little different, and we will look at both of those. So sex work to me is this umbrella of work that we do that can do a few things, can teach you, can facilitate you to understand more about your body and about pleasure. So that's one thing. So it can be actually under the umbrella, could be things like sex and intimacy coaching. Under the same umbrella, you could have somebody who is a sexual surrogate. And if you're not familiar with that term, uh, I did do a show several years ago about sexual surrogacy. And we will talk a little bit about that as well. <clears throat> All the way to, you know, street walker prostitution. And there, there's a whole lot of stuff that goes in between. I think the easiest way to break it down in my mind is that we have the sex work that's in person and we have the sex work that's online. And so we're going to break it down. That's how I'm going to break it down today. Um, legally, in Canada, you know, this is a really funny thing that happens. Legally in Canada, it is illegal to purchase anything to do with, uh, not, not, sorry, it's illegal to purchase sex. So if somebody's offering you the service of sex, it's illegal to purchase it, but it's not illegal to sell it. Well, how do you get around that? 
you ask, well, isn't that a strange situation to be in? You can sell it, but nobody can buy it. Let me rephrase this for you. So let's just say you are uh, a butcher and you are allowed to sell beef, but the people coming to you are not allowed to buy beef. How tricky is it for you to run your business? How, what would you do to get away with it? Now, say you're selling beef and people wanted to get beef from you, but they weren't allowed to buy it. What could they do is they could give you gifts in exchange for beef. So you're not technically selling it and they can give donations, which is different than a purchase price. So if you've been gifted something in exchange for sex, which guess what? It happens all the time and you don't even realize you're doing this. <laughs> there's always an exchange or should be. So you've probably exchanged for sex before, and that means you've committed something of a crime or not, right? Or you've been gifted. So uh, I know when uh, my husband's going to love that I tell this story. <laughs> when we first started dating in the first year or two years, um, I, I was needing a car and then my husband had found a like great little vehicle that really worked well for the lifestyle I had at the time. I needed to be able to travel with a bunch of massage tables so I could teach classes. And he found this great one. I could fit like five massage tables in it. It was so great. And it could fit like four or seven people. Loved it. Anyway, so we get this vehicle and uh, you know, he gets he didn't just buy it for me. He was like, What do you think of this? You know, he had some ideas around why it would work for me. We agree on the vehicle. He hands over cash to the guy to buy it. It was secondhand. He gets the vehicle, gives me the keys, and he says, and that's for sex with you. And I was like, oh, you're the best. So it's like our ongoing joke that he has actually exchanged, traded me a vehicle for sex. Now, I don't know if he was uh, paying me in advance, if he was back paying me. Uh, since that, I received a ring in exchange for sex called my wedding ring and my engagement ring. And I've received a few things that were in exchange for sex. Um, I had gifted him cash donations in exchange for sex as well. So you can have a lot of fun with this. And actually it was a lot of fun when I gifted him cash donations in exchange for sex. So um, if, uh, if you're looking to have some fun in your relationship and want to play sex worker and John or whatever position you want to go in, have fun with that, John, Jane. Anyway, so we're going to look at those two categories, the in-person. What can you do in person of that as a sex worker? And one of the, the top things, and as it's called, the oldest profession in the world, which is actually not accurate. And we talked about that on a show before as well. But it's fun to say it's the oldest profession in the world. Um, the actual probably oldest profession in the world was hunter gatherer. Uh, and then the second profession would have been farmer, I would think, because it would have been more of a profession where you were trading your crops in exchange for other things. So probably farmer. However, sex worker let's go with that and maybe they were trading sex for goods too like food so maybe they came at the same time isn't that great they they just they came at the same time i love when that happens so if you have you know you, if you have this view that you know this is the only way you can be a sex worker it's pretty limiting but let's look at these in person options so yes you could go from being like, say, for example, a street walking prostitute. What are the pros and cons here? The pros are the chances are you either work for yourself or you have a John that might be protecting you. Um, the cons are you work for yourself or you have a John protecting you, which means they take your money. And there's also, you know, STDs flying rampantly. There's usually a lot of drug use going on with uh, street walking prostitutes and it's a bit of a a bit of a, a lot more unhealthy situation health wise safety wise there's a lot that i would say are on the uh, the downfalls of being a street walking prostitute now you can get some high class prostitutes that are going through agencies where they have like a madam there's a roster you can 
uh, you know, order up somebody according to their looks or talents or capacities or what they like to do the most. Maybe they're like the hand job expert. So you hire them up to give you a great hand job. Now, these are these are not cheap workers. These are the, the you know, going to a street walk, street walker prostitute, you're going to probably be paying about one tenth or less than you would for uh an escort. And I say that because I do know people who have used pro escorts who, and I know the rate of those, and I won't say any connection to that because that would give it right away. Whoever's listening, if they happen to have ever known me in the past. Anyway, so escort escorts can make a lot of money in a night. And so if you are, you know, if you if you are really good looking, because that really helps, if you are like model type good looking and you have a really great ability to be a conversationalist, then being an escort might be a way to go. And escorts don't always have sex. In fact, a lot of times they're there for company or companionship or just to hang out with. And you'll find that, you know, some of the really rich will have escorts for events I know this too because I have a friend who was an escort for somebody who was really rich, won't name names. But, um, and she got to go to all kinds of events, never had sex with the guy, and got paid thousands of dollars a night and got to attend amazing galas for getting paid to go to them. And also the fact that uh, she got to attend like really expensive, you know, $10,000 plate dinners and get paid thousands of dollars a night just to look great and to be a conversationalist. And she had a pre-agreement with this person that she was not going to uh, be having any intercourse with them. So their need for that was fulfilled by other people who were okay with that and were willing to pay. The money for that service we're, we're willing to be paid for that service so you there's a lot of i think misunderstandings that if you're an escort this is exactly what you do no even within that you'll you can have control and personal choice and it needs to be consensual uh even with prostitutes it needs to be consensual people so you know sometimes people will hire out prostitutes because they think the prostitute will do anything or they have to do anything. And no, they don't. Because if you are forcing sex on anybody, even if you're paying them for it, and and they are a clear no, force is still force. It's still rape, even if you've given them cash after. Needs to be consensual. Needs to be, need, there needs to be uh, an understanding, a deal and deliver that happens in advance. So yeah, I think I would love to just get here are your do's and don'ts for prostitutes, especially even if even especially if you're street walkers and you need to learn some some business tactics on that. I don't know that I would have any street walkers be able to come and take courses on that, but that would be great if there was like a you know prep you up to go walk the streets and you can be safe and you can look for certain key signs and things. Although a lot of the people who are street walking prostitutes have um they develop an insight into that and looking back on my show I have had and you can go find this person I had um, a male prostitute on my show back in the first or second year that I had a show um I'll just give you his first name Alex you can go search that he is no longer a prostitute and he wasn't a prostitute at the time when I interviewed him he had gotten out of prostitution so he was a male prostitute for men and he he went through a lot in his experience. And I can't speak for him personally, but you can go listen to the episode with him on it where he does talk about his experience. So if you are considering that you need to do this, if you're doing sex work out of the need, like I have to, it's my only source of money. I get it. I've had those thoughts in my life. And if you're doing it out of the absolutely I have to and I have no other skill sets, guys, there's always another option. Like you can, if, if it's not something you really like or want to do, there are always other options. Sometimes you just need a hand. Sometimes you just need somebody to show you the way or guide you or give you some insight. And, and if you need support in that way, if you're in that life and you need to find a way out, um, I do know people who help people out of 
human trafficking. So absolutely send me a message and um, I'm happy to assist. So if you are in uh, sex work as an escort or a high class prostitute, we'll say, uh, and you know, you're loving your work, that's awesome. Keep going. That's consensual. That's something you enjoy. Uh, I really encourage that if you're doing anything work, sex work wise, that you're doing it from a place where you actually enjoy the work. So you're not any work. I think that's really important, especially sex work. So we're going to talk more about the in-person sex trade, and then we'll talk about the online sex trade after. So you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for the Pleasure Zone with Melitza. Every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we're talking all about sex work. What is it? How is it legal? How can we do sex work and be legal? So lots of questions that are out there, I'm sure, permeating through the air. And one of the things that I know for sure in Canada, because that's a country I can speak to on this, is that selling of sex in Canada is legal, but the purchase, the purchasing of sex is illegal in all circumstances. So even if the person had consented to pay for sex, it is illegal in all circumstances. So how do you get around that? So there's always a ways and loopholes around things, right? And one of the ways and loopholes around things is that somebody could donate things to you or give you gifts. Um, that is an exchange. And in a way, it's still, you know, it's kind of like a gray area. Um, so what I recommend is that if you would like to do sex work look at some of the options do you want to do in person or do you want to do online and then we're going to branch out those in person ideas right so we talked about uh street walking prostitution because that's usually where people's minds first go uh street walk street walking prostitutes have probably the hardest time of all the sex worker professionals um, escorts generally come from an escort service or their their own um, boss and they have like their own websites or something so you can connect with them usually when it comes from an escort service they've they've already been uh, vetted for you right so you're already going to know a lot about who they are what they offer uh, what they look like so you're not surprised when they show up it's kind of like a catalog you can go through. There used to actually be catalogs that you would go through. I think now they're online. I haven't looked. 
but I assume now they're online, but like 20 years ago, they were, yeah, they were in books and you could flip through the picture and order, order up your escort. So you can have an escort that's male or female. Uh, there is money to be made uh, as an escort in on both fronts, but there is more money to be made um, as an escort for, uh, as a woman, you can make more money as an escort than generally as a man, unless there are circumstances where you might get yourself a sugar mama. Um, and then that's a little different. And that's a whole other category where it's like, being a sugar baby is that sex work? Is it? Is it a relationship with benefits? So there are some gray areas too, and those are generally in person. That is sugar baby work. And another one would be anything in the kink world. So if you happen to go to a kink dungeon and say, you know, you're really into getting dressed as penguins, I'm just using the show from Netflix called Bonding as an example. And, you know, you happen to get paid to dress as a penguin. Now, none of that looks like sex work. However, the person who's paying you to dress as a penguin for them, this is their kink. This is their turn on. So they could be getting turned on by this and giving you money for it. And again, are you having sex with the person? Probably not. You might not even be touching their body at all. You might not even be doing anything to them. And I think if you are going to be doing any kind of work, that is kink related BDSM work, um, you would be really wise to have waivers for your clients so that they understand everything is consensual, that everything is up to them to give the, the um, to give the safe words. So there's a lot of, um, there is a lot of precautions you can take, especially as an escort or as a uh, BDSM or kink uh, dom or even as a professional sub you can you know you can create a lot of waivers and agreements with the people just for understanding and clarity and create some good boundaries uh, and helps with any misconceptions or misunderstandings because you have your clear your clear uh, waivers and deal and delivers going on and that isn't the case when it comes to street sex workers, street level sex workers. Uh, they, you know, they're just getting in situations that can be highly, highly dangerous. So, you know, if you really are thinking about, I'd really like to do something sex worker related, probably the easiest way to get involved is start your first OnlyFans page. And there are some other options out there that aren't called OnlyFans, but that's a really common one. You could always start with that. And it doesn't even have to be sexual. You don't have to be taking pictures of your genitalia or you don't even have to take pictures of yourself nude. It helps that you could take pictures of yourself that would turn you on. For example, there's a, there is a lady or a they, I'm not sure, that's on OnlyFans who um, dresses in like Victorian garb and takes pictures that are very modest and there is a huge following for modesty photos these days and they're showing nothing and they're doing no they're not having any sex with the people they're not touching them in any way and they are raking in the money so you gotta get there is like there is everything under the sun available when it comes to sex work and there can be some things that really make you happy, have you feel good about yourself, have other people feel good too. And there's nothing about it that would have you say, not want your grandchildren to know that you did it. So or maybe you're a proud prostitute and be like, yeah, I was an escort for like 20 years. I was the highest paid escort in the whole North America. Who knows? You can say whatever you like on that front. So in person, we've been talking about the in person, and I'll get back to that. We've got the street level sex workers. We've got exotic dancers, for example. We've got, you know, the massage parlors with the happy endings. Now, I have been accused of that on several occasions. Not accused, but asked if that's what I do. Um, so I do body work that is for aligning your spine. If you happen to get turned on when I touch you, congratulations. But there are, yeah, massage parlors. There are, um, even when you think about this, is like if you are uh, an exotic dancer, 
working in a club, then the people who are also working around you, like the service people who are serving drinks, the bartenders, uh, the bouncers, all of those, the managers, all of those people are also in the sex industry. They're all working as, uh, you know, basically a type of sex work. They're working in the sex industry. So the sex industry also, when it comes to things like pornography, is the producers, the people who are doing the editing, the people who are doing the filming, the you know, people writing the scripts, all of that is part of the sex work industry. So it's vast. When you think about it, the chances are you know somebody who's been in sex work on some level, you know, whether they were the bouncer at the bar or they were like, as I talk about it, I can think of so many people I know that were exotic dancers that managed those situations that were actually prostitutes that did um, exotic erotic massage and got paid for that um and who did phone sex a lot of friends actually maybe that's just who i attract and i'm like hey that's cool you did that for work cool so when we talk about um again all the in-person stuff you might even consider that uh you could be like a live-in lover too and and i had mentioned briefly the whole concept of having somebody who's a surrogate lover and there are surrogate lovers now i believe in canada there are surrogate lovers that are legally working in vancouver and there are surrogate lovers who are also working in the netherlands and they are both education-based they teach you about your body. They teach you about what's erotic. They teach you. They're basically like sex coaches, hands on, and they will guide you. And sometimes they'll also be the be available for you as like the first person you have sex with, because maybe you feel awkward and you don't know what to do. And you want to go to a professional who's actually going to be kind and not just be a prostitute who helps, you know, you get over it and one and done and whatever that is. So it would be great to uh, be able to explore these things a little bit more for anybody who's interested in that kind of work, because the the sexual surrogacy, I think there's a lot of value for it. One of the one of the things that I watched on sexual surrogacy was about this. Um, this group of women in the Vancouver area in BC and they have a house that is wheelchair accessible because a lot of their clients actually have disabilities mobility issues and they have um, and they have things that can help you know get a person out of a wheelchair onto a bed and sometimes it's not even about the sex it's about human touch and the gratitude that their clients have for what they offer is is just like the sweetest thing you've ever seen. They're so grateful for what the services these women offer. And they go through training and they go through like compassion training so they can understand how to be and how to, you know, work with people if, if you're nonverbal, how to get consent, how to do all kinds of stuff. I think it's one of um, under the the sex work category, I think it's one of the sweetest things that is offered um, because it really is taking into consideration the needs of people whose needs don't always get recognized as if, you know, you're in a wheelchair, so you don't have needs, sexual needs. So it recognizes that this there's that that there is a desire and that they're willing to. Um, create a, a safe place for people to go so that they don't feel judged and they don't feel taken advantage of. And it's really, it's really cool if you can ever watch, and I can't remember the name of the, the documentary I watched on that, but I'm sure if you look up sexual surrogacy, you'll find a bunch of information on that. It's, it's really kind and sweet work and it's done in person um, a sexual surrogacy is that you are the surrogate as a sex partner, just like if you are a surrogate mother, you're carrying somebody else's child. So being a sexual surrogate partner, you are kind of stepping in to be the sexual partner for somebody. You're not having a relationship. You're not a prostitute. You are um, taking them through a phase of their life to help them learn and grow. And um, I think it's a really valuable kind of work for sure highly respected so 
so that was a yeah that was another venture on my ideas of what else can be done <laughs> for for uh, in-person sex work if you have any other ideas i'd love to hear we are going to talk in our next segment all about the online um, ideas which are growing by the minute for sure and there's so many things and i hope to blow your mind in this next segment about some of the things that over the years i've uh, come across that have been sent to me i have a friend in particular who sends me a lot of crazy stuff jonathan he's also been a guest on this show several times and uh he always sends me great information about things that I might not know about that are going on in the sex industry. So we will talk about more about that when we come back from this commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melissa Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melissa Yelenich, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzayelenich.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email, info at melitzayelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking, or today, whatever time you're listening to this, we are talking all about sex work, the wide world of sex work. And as you've been listening to in the first half of this show, we were talking all about in-person sex, from street walkers to escorts to sexual surrogacy. The, the world is vast when it comes to in-person uh, sex work, you know, whether it's exotic dancing, whether it's being in the porn industry and you're making the porn, that's being part of the sex work. Then it goes out on the internet. So then you've got, you've got both online and in person happening on that front also there are um, so in montreal canada and i'm not sure where else this exists in the world other than uh, montreal and amsterdam but maybe nevada there are live sex shows that you can go attend they are in regular what looks like bars with signs outside live sex show and you can go in and you can watch people having sex that is another way to as a sex worker you could go and work at one of those places and offer you know offer to offer but get paid for in a way because you're an employee who is actually doing 
Uh, I think under that category, you're like an employee um, and you are kind of like putting on theater. And so there, and the theater is adult only theater. And because there's restrictions on the adult only theater, like 18 and plus, there may be some, again, gray areas, particularly in Montreal. And there, that might be the reason why it does exist in Montreal and not in a lot of other cities uh, in Canada and probably in New York, maybe as well. Thinking about like Nevada, New York, I don't know where else where that might exist, uh, but I haven't seen them, so I can't guarantee that. So yeah, live sex shows, that's another one. I was just popping up with ideas as I as I talk to you guys. Where else is there, you know, sex work going on that we don't even realize is happening? So we've got all of that going on. Now, looking at the wider world of the World Wide Web, and yeah, remember when we used to call it the World Wide Web, the internet? That's taking me back and that's aging me right there. You're welcome. Yes, I'm more than 17. So looking at the internet and what's available on internet, guys, it'd be mind blown. So I did say something about OnlyFans. And now OnlyFans is a great resource to find all kinds of different varieties, whether you're looking for the very overt, like full on uh, pictures of people having sex or videos of that. Absolutely, you can find that. If you're looking for the modesty photos that are also in a kink category, uh, if you're looking for specific kinks like being tied up or, you know, red bumps from being spanked, whatever you happen to be looking for, you'll probably find that on OnlyFans, whether it's scat play, whether it's water play, you know, you're going to find that. And so there's video, right? So let's, we'll summarize that with there's video, there's stills, there's, um, there's also products, right? So online, you know, you can end in person too. sex stores in person to get toys and, and different gear. You've got sex books, educational books. So if you're an author of sex books that are educational too, that's part of the sex, the sex industry. If you teach sex education, part of the sex industry, if you're like me as a sex and intimacy coach, that's part of the sex industry. It's big, right? It's really big. So coaching can be done online, in person as well. There are in-person classes as well. Uh, one of the very first episodes I had was with a group called uh, um, Taste, One Taste. Um, they had a little expose done on them. It was on Netflix a little while ago. And they were coming across quite as a cult. However, what they did teach was really some cool, simple methods on giving an orgasm through their uh, orgasmic meditation work, stroking. And so those workshops are done in person as well. And there were videos and there probably still are videos on Netflix. If you, uh, not, sorry, not on Netflix. That video is probably still on Netflix about one taste, but also on YouTube, you can find instructional videos on some of their techniques. So if you, yeah, just thinking about it, it's just fast. <laughs> so, and it's not just, you know, men paying women. It's not just a heterosexual game here. It's everybody under the sun doing everything from all ages, unfortunately, because sometimes you have children involved in pornography. So when I'm talking about this to be legal, we're looking at people at the age of consent. And I call the age of consent 18. I'd rather have it be 21, but it's 18. Um, though in some places, uh, if you're AFAB assigned female at birth, your con age of consent is 16. I think it should be 18 across the board. Just my interesting thought on that. And um yeah, so where was I going with that? <laughs> I was going somewhere. Anyway, there's uh, there's so many different ways. So online, we're going to go back to that. So we've got video, we've got stills, we've got products, right? Oh, that's where I was going. So we were talking about you go into sex shops and buy toys, but also online. So for a while, I did, uh, I was part of a, um, like an MLM for sex toys. So for now they call it direct sales marketing. 
direct sales. However, it is MLM. So anyway, it is what it is. And so you can get involved in selling sex toys. That's also part of the sex industry. Selling books, toys, all the paraphernalia that go with it. Maybe you're going to invent some. That's also part of the sex industry. So you know, uh, the other things that go for online, you know, like I was mentioning earlier, educational classes. So I would, I prefer doing educational videos for sex rather than porn because porn is not educational. So if you can, if you are interested in learning stuff about sex and how to have better sex, definitely don't use porn as your teacher. It's not a teacher. It's there to stimulate your brain, get you addicted and have you keep going and have your brain get overly addicted. And then you can't be stimulated any other way. Then you need more and more and more and something worse and greater and harder, faster and more extreme. Then you get into extreme sports and you can't even respond to anything anymore because your body is just over stimulated. That's my interesting take on that. <laughs> so online. Oh, so some other fun things online. So we're talking about selling sex toys. Yay. Other things that occur are things like uh, specific fetishes. So online, you might find that you say, for example, if you have uh, a high heel fetish, there are groups online where you can go and you can watch uh, somebody try on their high heels, show them off, and they will uh, start bidding and people will bid for their high heels while you watch live. And it's not just high heels, it's like anything, you know, you could go on there, be using a vibrator and then have people watch you do that. And then they could, but you know, then they would all bid on the vibrator from you. It can be anything. So there's bidding that happens for different circumstances and different scenarios. Uh, and there's other ways to do that as well. So there is a site, and I think it still exists. I, one of my friends had sent it to me, was for selling used panties. And the panties were selling anywhere from like $50 a pair to thousands of dollars a pair. And there were some of the things under the category of panty sales and used panty sales were duration of wear and um, what was in them, like where was there come on them was there blood on them was there nothing on them like some some of them are more pricey and some of them are they'll say they're worn for a day or five days or three weeks and i'm thinking that is a really funky funky body if you're wearing your same panties for three weeks but even five days what are you doing that is going to be some funk but if you're into the funk and you want to pay somebody a lot of money for the funk they they usually will just show you the pictures of the underwear and not a lot of information on the person. So you don't even know who you're getting that from. Maybe some of the more expensive ones, you also get to see their faces, but it's basically a distribution site. So they hook you up with the buyer and then you sell through that. It's like Amazon for used panties. So that exists. And then also in the sex industry is like AI dolls. So that's like the future where we're headed, right? There's these uh, robotic dolls. And at the very start of COVID in Toronto, there was a brothel that was open that all that was all robots. And I thought that is actually brilliant. He had been working on it for a while before COVID hit. And then right when COVID hit, um, it was like the perfect thing for the industry for you know people were going through a lot of fear there was there was all that happening and so as a result having this alternative where you could be with a robot that was hyper realistic and you could just clean up the robot after you know you don't have to worry about stis you don't have to worry about pregnancy um you even get interaction you can pick the body that you like like uh, for people who are having a really hard time relating to other people, not that this is a solution. Like if you really can't relate to other people, there are ways to learn how to. But as an interim kind of solution, having having robots could be a bit of an interim solution. I wouldn't recommend it being your only solution, but it could be an interim solution, kind of like sexual surrogacy. But this is with robots. And the robots aren't educating you like a sexual surrogate would, but they're available. So, so yeah, the robots were in person too, but my thoughts went from computers to AI. And <laughs> so that's where that went. And if you're also 
uh, some of the things online are like online books, but you can also get books in person too, but the erotica. So if you're a writer of erotica, that also classifies you under the category of sex work, sex industry. So if you're in the sex industry working, you're doing a kind of sex work. So sex industry is, as you can see, vast books, toys, selling of, of odds and ends that have been used, bidding on things that have are being used or not being used or licked or God knows what, like you could be doing anything. Somebody could pay for your, uh, you know, for you to send them urine soaked uh, panties. Sure. Go for it. If that turns, it floats your boat. I just don't know about the shipping of it and the biohazard. So there are some things to consider like biohazard. You don't want that to go through the mail. And I think to back in the day, and in a way we still kind of have this, there was also phone sex, right? So you could, and I don't know if the phone sex still operates the way that it used to, where you dial up a number that I didn't check into, but they do have online service like that too, where you're getting walked through uh, different scenarios. You know, sometimes again, it's, there's many people coming into a room to one person who's the sex worker who's either um, maybe doing things she could be masturbating in front of people showing off her boobs waiting for bids to come up there was another thing on netflix about that too where uh, it was a documentary about sex workers and they uh, the one lady you know she would like wait for bids to go up and then show a nipple and then you know more bids come in and so the money gets the money does raise a lot it gets collected and I think it takes a lot for somebody who is a sex worker online. They have to be at it a lot and they have to get creative to keep, like, keep their audience going. Just like you, like people who are content creators on YouTube who are, you know, getting the millions of hits and they're putting content out, you know, almost every day. They have, that is a big job and they have teams usually behind them. And if they don't, that's even more work. So Kudos to the online sex workers who are at it, you know, hours and hours and hours a day um, waiting for attention uh, and waiting for bids because it, I can imagine, is a highly competitive industry. Um, I've never been in it, but I can imagine that it's incredibly highly competitive. And if you don't have a certain niche that uh, attracts people to you, then it would be even harder. So my recommends on if you do want to do that work is to get a niche. Maybe you have a kink that you particularly like to explore and people would be attracted to that. Just like I was mentioning earlier about the lady on OnlyFans who, uh, lady or they, not sure, MB, could be an MB, um, who dresses in Victorian uh, dresses and, uh, oh, could also be trans man, trans could be sorry trans woman i'm not sure whatever whatever the situation there is a person making a lot of money who wears victorian garb and basically is modest and just shows off like their ankles i think it's so cool and i love that there are people who are into that i think that's so fun too and part of that why i think that's so great is that you know, we are going to extremes sometimes. People are going for the harder, faster, and it's going to come to a place where you could almost be like self asphyxiation, which we've talked about is a really extreme play to do. And it could come down to needing something that extreme in order to get turned on. So, if we can keep it at the level where things can build and grow and, you know, you can have a lifetime of fun, that is fantastic. And things like modesty play can be really fun. Like, no, you can't see my nipples. No, you can't. can be fun, just as much as showing them off. We're going to head to our last commercial break. You're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Milica Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. 
On the Pleasure Zone Radio Show with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenic, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email info at melitzayelenich.com Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. One of the things that I forgot to mention when it comes to sex work and, um, you know, the wide world of sex work is events. There are actually sexual events going on in the world where whether it has to do with being a, a swinger or whether you're going to education uh, or you're going to watch somebody like do live orgasms. There is there is a lot happening. There are events everywhere all the time. There are some of the some of the biggest uh, events when it comes to in person sex that has to do with like uh, swinging actually take place in Toronto. That's what I was told, and they you know take over several hotels as far as I'm aware and have a great old time. So. Places too, like in Jamaica, going to hedonism, people who run hedonism, they're all involved in the basically sex industry. So it's wide, right? It's so wide. I it, Just to think about where it's easier, I think, to think where isn't sex? Because even when you look at marketing, they're always throwing sexual innuendo and sex content in there. Not that it's sex industry, but definitely everybody's aware that sex makes money. And people are interested, whether they're overtly interested or they're hiding it, there is an underlying interest for the majority of the planet. There's a curiosity going on. So it sells and people know it. And the irony in Canada is you can sell it, but you can't buy it. I wonder where else that's true in the world. Where do you guys live? I would love to hear if where you live, is that true too? Can you sell sex where you live, but you can't buy it? It's kind of like in Amsterdam where you can smoke uh, marijuana in a cafe, but not on the street, but you can smoke cigarettes on the street, but not in a cafe and you can't mix them or something like that. There's like weird rules for everything everywhere. And, uh, you know, whether you're, choosing to get yourself an OnlyFans page or you're, you know, going to sell your shoes online after you've worn them, or maybe you're selling your old panties. Guys, there's a million ways to do this. But the top thing to to really be aware of is, is it enjoyable for you? Are you doing it because you love it? Because that can be an industry that could lead to a lot of embarrassment, that could lead to trauma, that could lead to you um, you know, devastating things. I mean, any industry can lead to death, but there's probably a lot more death that happens um, as a street level prostitute than there is as, say, an, an online content creator for kink. So consider your avenue, consider what you'd like to bring out to the world, consider what's fun for you and easy for you and uh, that fits within your morals, that fits within your values. I know that sounds funny talking about sex industry, but there are lots of people with morals and values in the sex industry. Uh, absolutely. A lot of people know that consent is required and um, are all for that. So if you are considering it, please be 18 or more and make sure that you're doing things that look after yourself and your body and your health and your emotions and your spirit so that you're not walking away traumatized from the work that you're doing. So in the meantime, if you do have any issues and you would like to talk about them or you'd like to have some coaching regarding the sex industry, how to get involved, I do have friends in different areas and I'd be happy to connect you. Um, but I would vet you first before I connect you. So please connect with me through my website. Thank you for listening to The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. 
The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.